Hey, this is Davis with your Math and Science Center tutor tip. So today we're going to be talking about choosing creative coordinate systems for physics problems. In just about every physics class, you'll interact with some problem like this, an inclined plane problem. We have a block on a slope. And it's normally taught that you can pick your coordinate system however you want to make the problem easier. So normally we would have, you know, gravity is going up and down, that's the y-axis and everything else is going side to side in the x-axis. But here, that's not the case. We've been told that we can choose this direction as the x-axis down the, down the slope, and this direction as the y-axis into the slope. And that makes uh, our, our dynamics here much easier. Now, the reason we can do that is because physics doesn't care which way you're looking at it. Picking that coordinate system is the same thing as just pretending that you're looking at the, the system like this. Now, our y-axis is straight up and down, and our x-axis is horizontal, like we'd expect. Now, the thing that's interesting about that is that you can pick different coordinate systems for different objects. So suppose we've got this sort of pulley system here, where we've got two blocks uh, that are both attached to this string. Now, uh, this block is going to have mass m, and this block is going to have mass 2m. So we know that gravity is pulling harder on this block, and so overall we know that this block is going to move downward. And because this block is attached to it, this block is going to move upward. So that is to say, uh, this is going to go down, this is going to go up. Now these blocks are attached together by this string. So that means they have to move together whenever one of them moves. Now normally we might pick, okay, suppose that this direction is up and this direction is down, then we could make a sum of force diagrams for, for both of these two blocks. But we're going to do it slightly differently. Let's suppose that this direction is positive x, and similarly this direction will be negative x. Uh, now we could have chosen it the other way, but I'm going to go ahead and choose it that way. So let's think about what happens here. When this block moves in the positive x direction, moves down, this block moves this way, moves upward. This block moves upward when this block moves downward. So why don't we go ahead and do this? So I'm going to say for this block, this direction is positive x, and this direction is negative x. Now here's the thing that's important about that. When this block moves in the positive x direction, so does this block. These coordinate systems are backwards from each other. However, they are not backwards in the terms of the way that the blocks move. So let's try to figure out the total acceleration on both of these blocks. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to use this law, f equals ma, where the important thing here is that this m is the total mass of the system. OK, so let's find the total mass of the system. Uh, and also all the forces. Uh, so the total mass of the system, right, is going to be m plus 2m. So that's just 3m. And the sum of the forces, let's go through it. So, okay, this block has the weight force going downward. So that will be mg and it's going in the negative x direction, so we'll put the uh, minus sign there. Now, it also has this tension force from the rope going upwards, so we'll go ahead and add a tension force, which we don't know what that tension force is. Uh, we also have this second block, M2. Now, it also has a tension force going up, but for that block, that corresponds to negative x, so we will go ahead and subtract tension there. Uh, and then lastly, this block has a force of weight, which is going downward. Uh, and that is positive x for that block. So it'll be plus 2mg. Now the thing that's great about this is that our tensions just cancel out. Similarly, one of these mg's is going to cancel out with that. So the, tum the total force is just mg. So... What's great about this is that we have completely canceled out tension. If we were to work with these two blocks individually, we'd have to figure out what the tension is in order to figure out the acceleration. Now we don't. So we have the sum of the forces and we have the mass, so let's plug that in. So we know that mg, the sum of the forces, 
is equal to our total mass, so 3m, and then times a. Now, uh, these m's are going to cancel out, and we can divide both sides by 3 to get that a is equal to g over 3. Now, uh, on a physics test, you might be asked which direction that's going. Uh, and that, of course, depends on the block. B uh, this block with uh, mass 2m is going downward uh, with an acceleration of g over 3. And this block is going upwards at an acceleration of g over 3. So that's how we do that problem. Now, let's look at another similar one, except this time we'll have two different directions. So we have these two blocks tied together on this inclined plane. And what we want to know is, uh, what is the mass of this block such that the whole system doesn't move, such that uh, it's, well, I guess that it's at constant velocity, so it's a, such that there's no acceleration. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to pick this direction to be uh, plus x. And I'm going to pick this direction to be plus y. So let's figure out when this block moves in positive x, how does this block move? Well, if this block goes like this, then this block must move up. So that is to say, I'm going to go ahead and define this way to be plus x. And it doesn't really matter which way I pick y for this block, because the things are going to be moving in y, but I'll go ahead and say it's this one. Um, so now we can figure out uh, the dynamics of the system. So we know, uh, let's go ahead and draw all the forces. We know that this has uh, a weight force of x, that mass times g, which is going in the uh, negative x direction. And we know that it has a tension force going up. We know that this block has a tension force going down, or going in negative x, that is. Uh, and we know it has a weight force going straight down, uh, which will be mg. Now, uh, we know that we can break this force up into its different components. So we can make this y component, and we can make this x component. Uh, so I'll just call this wy and wx for now. Uh, and then we also know that there is a normal force going along the ramp. And that's it. Those are our three forces, the tension, the normal force, and the weight force. Uh, so we know that the normal force and the weight force in the y direction are going to cancel each other out. So I'm just going to cancel those out now. So we have to worry about the two tension forces, the two weight forces. Uh, but one of these weight forces, in particular this one, uh, we have to care about that it's, you know, which part of it is in the x direction. So the way that we'll do that, standard from your physics course, this angle is theta, and so this weight force here will be mg sine theta in the x direction. So let's go ahead and uh, we can just say that, that this is zero. So let's go ahead and figure out the acceleration uh, in the x direction. So what do we, what do we have? Uh, well, for this block, we have xg in the negative direction. So minus xg. Um, we also have a tension force going in the positive x direction, so plus tension. Uh, here we also have tension, but now this is the direction that we had declared to be negative x. So we'll go ahead and subtract off tension. Uh, and then finally, we have this weight force, uh, mg sine theta, that is going in the positive x direction. So plus mg sine theta. Like before, these tensions cancel out. So we have uh, mg sine theta minus xg. Now, since we said that the acceleration is 0, right? this is max. And we said the acceleration is supposed to be zero. That's what we're trying to, to figure out the uh, weight of x in. Uh, so that means that this whole thing is equal to zero, this mg sine theta minus xg. And so that means that if we're going to, we can divide both sides by g. So zero is equal to 
m sine theta minus x and add x to both sides. x is equal to m sine theta. So that is, this block weighs m sine theta relative, well, it has a mass of m sine theta. So let's reiterate what, what happened here. So we had this system. We had these two blocks that were uh, tied together by a string. And we picked a coordinate system for the first one. So we picked positive x in this direction just because we thought that would be easier. So then what coordinate system did we pick for this block? Well, here's what we figured out. We figured out when this block moves positive x, where does this block move? If this block moves down the ramp, this one moves upward. So we said those directions, we're going to declare that they're the same. So we're going to say this is positive x and this is positive x. What that means is that we can come up with this fx equals max for the entire system with this big capital M. That's what allows us to make this equation where these two tension forces cancel out perfectly. In the example before, the same situation happened. The only way that we could say that these two forces, these, these two tensions, were acting on the same system is if these two directions lined up as if forces that were positive on this block were positive on this block. Um, so this means that we can just completely shortcut thinking about tension. We don't have to think about tension at all. Um, so then let's just do one last sanity check on this problem. So we figured out that the weight uh, or the, the mass of x such that the system has no acceleration is m sine theta. Let's think about if, th if that makes sense. So if we made the system in real life, we'd have this block m and this block x, which is m sine theta. Now, because sine theta is between negative 1 and 1, and since this angle is less than 90 degrees, um, well, I guess really less than 180 degrees, we know that this m sine theta is less than m, because this number is less than 1. Um, so that is, this block here is lighter than this block. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. So these two blocks are attached together. If they were attached together like this, uh, where they were just together on the string, they would have to have the same mass to cancel out. But now, this one, some of the weight is absorbed by this, by this block, by this like diagonal wedge. So that means that this one can be heavier, because this block is absorbing some of the, some of the mass. So we would expect that this one can actually be lighter relative to this one than it could if they were hanging straight down. So m sine theta makes sense as an answer. And further, as this ramp gets closer and closer to vertical, as this gets closer and closer to 90 degrees, um, this uh, m sine theta will get closer and closer to m, and so these blocks will be closer and closer to weighing the same amount. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got for you guys. Thanks.